Good evening, everyone. We are so excited to be back here with you uh, at the London Dairy View uh, in a very, very special place in our great town um, with a very, very special guest. Um, before we start, I have to say that this is episode 55, and we started London Dairy View about four years ago. So it's been a long COVID year for everyone. Um, we tried to get a couple shows in, but now we're going to get back into our routine, so we have lots of good things to come. Yeah. So. Um, Glad we're here. Bonnie's with us, mm -hmm. Kathy, um, Jeff we're going to introduce. Our Kirby um, is off doing a 10 things tonight, but she'll be back with us too. Yeah, I think the next one she'll be with us. I do too, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're getting closer to all being together. So I wonder if you can tell, before we say anything, where we are um, in this beautiful museum that is located right here in Londonderry. It's the Aviation Museum of New Hampshire and it's located right on the border of Londonderry and then the Manchester Airport. And we have Jeff with us tonight, Jeff Rappus from, uh, Jeff oversees everything here at the museum. Um, he's the heart behind it all from what I hear and we are just so excited <laughs> that the, he the, is here with us The tonight. official title is Chief Herder of Cats <laughs> <laughs> because it's not for me to take credit. This is a volunteer run organization and uh, without the volunteers, uh, this would just be another building at the airport. It's all mm -hmm. about our volunteers, many of whom are from right here in Londonderry. Yeah. We have some that come from far away to help us out, but the majority are right here in Londonderry yeah. helping us out uh, all week long. Sometimes um, when we're not open, they come and do chores. Sometimes when we are open, they lead tours. The Londonderry residents are a really important part of our museum. So I would give credit to them as much as anyone. All right. So many hearts. Yes. And when are you open? When are we open? Uh, well, that's a good question. We are, um, because we're volunteer um, oriented, um, our schedule is uh, geared toward people's sort of hours in the off time. And so our hours are, were Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we're not open Monday through Thursday, but Friday okay. uh, from 10 to 4 and Saturday from 10 to 4. And then Sundays from 1 to 4. So that's when we're open to the public. Uh, but we do have many times where we're open extra hours. Uh, around Christmas, we do a, a, what I like to think of as a fantastic uh, holiday display of toy airplanes and model aircraft. And we are open for extra hours, including at night sometimes, for people to come. If they're out looking at the lights, they can come see our planes. Uh, and then, for instance, this week that we're taping this, it's school vacation week in New Hampshire, so we'll be open on Thursday. Uh, for families to come here uh, oh, of this school vacation. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. we are uh, really uh, trying to be as kid-friendly as we can, and so it gives people an option on vacation week uh, to come here and enjoy mm -hmm. what we have on a Thursday when families are sometimes looking for things to do. And especially for Londonderry residents, um, we're just a, a great place to come. We have different exhibits all through the year, and if you become a member, you can just come in whenever you like and you don't have to worry about paying admission. So that's a good deal. Yeah. And if you're a member, you also get to do things like we have a, a, a wonderful um, library we call the Slesser uh, Aviation Lending Library. It's named after one of our benefactors, uh, Gene Slesser. And we have over a thousand um, aviation books. Uh, yeah. And these are specialty books that people who love planes would just be uh, crazy to see and want to take. So we made it into a lending library. And members can come here and borrow up to three books for 30 days, oh. take them home, spend some time with them, get to know them. Please bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's another thing you get to do if you're a member here. That's so, a good idea. Yeah, we're like yeah, an extra so library nice. you have yeah. here right in Londonderry, um, but it's all about aviation. So, that's and so we've nice. got bi biographies, we've got wonderful kids' novels from the 1940s and 50s when there was oh. a real magic about aviation. Oh, that's true too. And you can really get a sense of what people felt was special about uh, the world of flight in those years that are long gone by now. So it takes you really back to this more innocent age where it was still a magical thing to see an airplane in your community oh, or flying overhead. It's, uh, you know, it's truly a hidden treasure uh, right here in Londonderry. And I think people forget that these treasures are, are here for us and for all of the school age children, mm -hmm. the seniors, for all of us, mm -hmm. but also when you have visitors from out of town. Um, a wonderful volunteer here, Lois Dragowski, had reminded me that it's here and she volunteers quite a lot. Um, we had been teachers together mm -hmm. and we had company coming from Rochester, New York with little ones, um, you know, uh, nine and five. And, you know, it's like, what, what's the be what better could we do than come to the aviation? <laughs> yeah. 
Museum, and we did, and they were just mystified. You know, their parents were, we were, I mean, there are so many treasures. And what I love is, is that it's contained, like I don't have to walk to wings, and there's <laughs> yeah. so much happening right here, the mystery of it all. Yeah. And uh, you'd be shocked when you walk around, you know, there's really just more than you could ever guess in this building, and the lights and the excitement. And the energy. So, you know, bring your guests from all over the country, all over the world. Especially they if they be fly in right here. Oh, yeah. I mean, the my run, we can see one of the runways right outside yeah, of yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. You well, know? we do try to pack a lot into our space. We're not as big as some other museums, oh. um, but we have so much to do here in terms of telling stories uh, about aviation in New Hampshire and about uh, getting uh, young people, especially, I think, to sort of feel. Uh, a sense of magic about flight, which is often the first step toward making it a career, right. going into aviation, whether it's a pilot or air traffic controller right. or uh, mechanics or going to aerospace engineering. Mm -hmm. A lot of that happens at that time in childhood where you do get that model plane under the Christmas tree and right. it starts yeah. something that becomes a lifelong love mm -hmm. affair. Mm -hmm. And we're all about trying to get that going here. And so we're, we're really pleased to be named, just last month we were named the best place uh, to take kids in southern New Hampshire by the wow. Hippo Press Readers Poll, which is a, an actual poll of just people right. uh, writing in what they think uh, is good about the best restaurants and the best uh, hair salons. And we got named Best Place to Take Kids right here in yeah. Londonderry. That's, yeah. um, and that's, that's up against, yeah. well, there's, there's some fantastic places in New Hampshire that have always been great for kids. There's the Sea Science Center, right. there's the Children's Museum out in um, Dover. Uh, and for us to be in that category and to be recognized as the best place to take oh kids is a goodness. real credit. Again, it's the volunteers that come right. here and make it happen uh, that have given us the chance to shine like that. And I think oh, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a good way for Londonderry to introduce itself it really uh, to people. Is. This is what we do in Londonderry. We have, right. even, we have the best place to take kids in we New Hampshire, do. right here in Londonderry. They, you're right. It's, it's a lot um, to be proud of here. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. with your volunteers, too, like you think that, you know, we tend to think volunteers here would be all seniors, you know, people our age and, and above. Mm -hmm. and uh, But they're not. When we came through, a wonderful um, young man named Matt, an engineer, just had, you know, his first daughter. And he just excited. It was just so exciting for all of us. And he does this once a month, I think, he said, on Sundays. And um, he wasn't a pilot. He just had such an interest mm -hmm. in um, in the museum and flight and you know what and that's just what wonderful. you need somebody's got the passion yeah yes, that's, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah there's no like um, there's no requirement to be a volunteer here other than if you hear a loud noise out on the field and you look to see what it is then you're one of us <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need um, and we do try to be welcoming so for instance Lois your yes. friend is doesn't have a background in aviation right. necessarily. Um, uh, I think we've all flown on a plane at this point, so we're all we're all veterans of aviation one way or another. <laughs> uh, but in Lois's case, she's a retired math teacher, yes. uh, and she's involved with the Grant State Ambassadors, and so she's always That's made right. volunteering a big part of her life. And just through some connections, she felt she wanted to check out this odd museum that she hadn't yeah. learned about before, and. It turned out to be something she really felt was um, worth her time, and we're so grateful that people, even if they're not a yeah. career aviation person, can come here and help us uh, continue to, to build our museum uh, as a place to welcome guests and visitors from really all around the world. You mentioned yes, we get people, uh, probably every week we get someone from as far away as Europe or Australia. That wow. uh, there, A lot of times you get people coming through the airport on business or on layover, and yes. uh, the, the fixed-based operator signature flight service is just a little ways up the road. And so if people are here waiting for their jet or something, mm. they, they often say, go down and check out the Aviation oh, Museum. And so we get yeah. people coming here um, because they have um, time to kill. But oh. what a surprise to find this. Very home. much so. This uh, visitor yeah. place right down the road from where you're yeah. waiting there. And uh, we love welcoming people in because the fact that they're surprised is a terrific way to get started. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Because there's a lot of energy with that. We can get them in here and... Uh, pretty much uh, keep them surprised as they go around and, oh. and uh, introduce them to what we do here. Yeah, the couple that was like kind of going around with us, they were from Australia. Okay, And it yeah. was just wonderful, you know, and, it, and they <laughs> yeah. were just in awe of it too. You know, and it yeah, captivates yeah. all ages, which I think is, you know, just wonderful. Yeah, yeah, well, we like to think that we appeal to kids and the young at heart. Yes. And that could yeah, be anybody. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I don't know if the camera captures it, but we're sitting under um, a collection of um, large-scale model planes these were all built not by a child, but by a senior citizen wow. um, who worked for 20 years assembling this armada, this fleet of, um, of wonderful aircraft from World War II and before. 
Uh, and it's featured here in part because we want people to understand that the love of aviation and model planes, as expressed this way, is not something just for kids. There are people who are very serious about it their whole lives. And this guy's retirement project, his passion project, was to build this, uh, this collection that we now are displaying uh, above us. Um, and he was a local guy. He wasn't from London, he was from Goffstown. Um, but uh, one of his uh, relatives, his son-in-law, works here at the airport. And unfortunately, when this was his um, father-in-law, when he passed away a few years ago, what are we going to do with the airplanes? And so they came to us, and we felt, well, we can, they can help tell us. They can help us tell our story mm -hmm. and help connect with people and show people yeah, it's not just about like kids. It's Isn't about it something funny. We're all everybody. like that. Like, yeah. yeah, I just love that. Where, you know, it keeps your yeah. mind just going it's all really. around. Yeah. So all these planes that are here are all made by well, the different ones, people. Well, are... yeah, the ones above us were made by one gentleman okay. um, from Goffstown. Um, behind us, probably out of camera view, we have what's called the Wall of Planes. And there's about um, 200 and some odd models of different types. And those are all um, from all different sources. We get people donating models to us. Some of them are very high-end collectible models. Um, and some of them are just uh, toys that we've had in our collection. And we sort of put them together to tell the history of aviation. You can go through with a guide and start over there from the early days of the Wright brothers and then work your way all oh, through to modern okay. military aircraft. Um, so um, a, a lot of these were donated by uh, Mauro Scali, who was a Londonary gentleman who passed away several years ago, and he had collected something like 35 or 40 of these wonderful Pacific uh, collectible aircraft, right. and uh, they were donated to us um, uh, when he passed away, and so they're all here as well. They make up part of our, yeah. our display now, mm -hmm. um, and the, the planes are all arranged um, uh, in, on shelves. And unexpectedly, we found that it, 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 it draws people into it because uh, no matter who you were or what you are, if you're a veteran, if you served, if you flew years ago, you can find the aircraft up there that you used oh, to know. Oh, and wow. you, you crewed on or you worked on it. Oh, and then the stories start wow. coming. Yeah. And that's been a real, real yeah. unexpected sign. We thought we would just display all these as a way to kind of tell the story of aviation. Instead, yeah. we're getting all these great stories from uh, local people. Um, who have served or have crewed on these planes mm -hmm. um, so over the years, many of which are no longer in existence because right. they're so, you know, from such a long time ago. Right. So, so uh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask, Drew, did you get a chance to look and see if... <laughs> did? Thumbs okay. Up from okay. Drew okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we want to encourage people to visit the museum, so we don't want to show them everything right there, right? <laughs> <Is that> right? <laughs> Good point. And then the plane over here, too, I forget what Matt told us about that. The well, plane, there's the a, a very large uh, cockpit from an Embraer 110, which is a, a real commercial airliner, a small one. And it was being um, cut up for scrap right here in Manchester. Uh, and some of our volunteers, whose names are on the side there, it says Embraer Flight Crew, um, they said, no, we can actually save the front end of it because it, one thing we needed in the museum was something for kids to come in and get inside oh. and just go crazy in. Um, yeah. It's, it's right. an airplane cockpit, but we have all the fake instruments in it. Yeah. But it, it's built for kids to go in and just get an experience of oh. sitting uh, in the, nice. the left and the right hand seats. And we have it up against the window, so it's almost like you're on the field. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And nice. we have the control tower radio piped into it, which we yeah. turned off for this broadcast. But that ends that a lot. That lends a lot of authenticity to it as well. That's only for kids to get into. It. No, <laughs> we've had senior citizens fight to get in. So a senior um, citizen might try yeah. it. And, and so it was kind of sad for, uh, during COVID nineteen. We had to put that away because it was um, it didn't measure up to the standards that the governor's order wow. um, uh, that applied to museums said. We had to remove a lot of the the sort of touch me exhibits mm -hmm. um, and so that was put away but in, with the loosening of restrictions we just recently have got it back on the floor mm -hmm. and we do require people there's some you'll see there's hand sanitizer and, and some bleach wipes, wipes there yeah. so it's we have to treat it like a piece of gym equipment now right? <laughs> if you use it you're going to wipe it down and the kids do it some of the kids love wiping it down as yeah. much as going in it so i think the kids are all getting used to that now uh, you yeah know, you know that the routine of it yeah. i think you're right yeah. With our masks and yeah, the hands, the holes. <laughs> and yeah, you know, it's great. And you also have that simulator in the back yes. there that I know that that's kind of too, it's, I don't know if it's up and running fully yet, but I know that I've 
I've seen and heard a lot of good things yep. about it. We have a professional grade uh, elite simulator um, with Prepare 3D software on it, so you can get fly in. The plane. You can get in the, the oh, plane. You can fly. <laughs> you can fly for as long, until you run out of gas, virtually. Oh, well, um, or we, crash. Yeah, or crash. Well, that's, why we, so that's why we have simulators. Yes, yeah, because um, it's fascinating. We used that simulator during COVID. Uh, during the time we were closed, yes. we, we do a lot of education outreach to schools and we couldn't do anything because yeah. schools were closed, but uh, kids were all doing remote learning. So we took our simulator, instead of using it to just fly to Concord and back, we bought extra software and we were able to fly all around the world right here from oh, Manchester, gosh. Oh. and we did a series of segments, um, several dozen of them, where we flew from Manchester across the North Atlantic over the old Northeast Ferry Route, oh, you know, where they used to, gosh. it's how they brought aircraft and materials from here to Europe oh. during World War II. So up through Greenland, Iceland, down into Europe. We flew over the Eiffel Tower. Oh, that's <laughs> we, that's we, amazing. We went down uh, into Africa, flew over the pyramids. And then went across to Dubai and then flew over the Taj Mahal. Can you, can and came all the way back to Manchester <laughs> three months later. And it's all online. So if you go to our website, which I don't know if we're going to list that, but it's oh, yes, aviationmuseumofnh.org. Easy to remember. You can sort of tune in and see our segments that are still all archived there. It was a fantastic success. We, when we flew over the English Channel, it happened to be Memorial Day. And so we're just going across where Normandy was. And so we decided we'd do a live stream, which was a new thing for us, where it was only going to be a two hour flight. So we would do the whole flight online, virtually, you know, in the simulator, because oh you're looking gosh. out the cockpit the whole time. Uh -huh. uh, and we flew over the English Channel and right to where the beaches in Normandy were. And so we were prepared. We sort of um, were ready to talk about the history of it. It was Memorial Day, it was a good day to do it. To our surprise, and we sent out a little press release beforehand to the, the local media. Uh, and so a couple of days before, I get a Google alert because um, of the Aviation Museum is in the news. And it turns out Newsweek Magazine has us as one of the five oh, ways gosh. to celebrate Memorial Day virtually. Oh, wow. We were there with um, uh, the Grand Opry thing in Nashville wow. and Kathy wow. Gifford's Memorial Day Parade at the <laughs> Aviation Museum of New Hampshire. Here in Londonderry. In Londonderry. In Londonderry. Right Londonderry. In there. I yeah. love that. And, and oh. so sure enough, it was th over a thousand people tuned in. And we're used to audiences, you know, they're not like that. <laughs> so that was a real chance for us to sort of uh, reach a lot of people. And we had comments good. from people literally all around the world Jeez, who yeah. somehow found out about it. That's people amazing. People from France, oh, people from other places. Imagine your grandkids Bonnie and all, right? New grandbaby, oh, wow. that, you know? I mean, it's like, wow, that's exciting, well, though. Yeah, it's an example of how COVID, we never would have done that if it hadn't been for the that's pandemic. Right, yeah. 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 So that's talk true. about lemons into lemonade. Right. Yeah. yeah. We've been drinking a lot of lemonade here lately because we're, <laughs> we're trying to, we've been trying to use the pandemic as a, a way to almost look at everything. We're right. doing a strategic mm, planning exactly. process right. now and, and see what it is we want to be both now and when we come out of this and what we can do best and what our strengths are. So it's been a, a kind of an interesting challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if financially it was tough for us and any nonprofit when you lose yeah. all of your admissions revenue oh, yeah. Yeah. and we rent the place out if you're interested. <laughs> we do receptions, <laughs> we do conferences, all that disappeared. Yeah, and that's, and that's a serious chunk of our operating budget. Um, and we were lucky with some federal grant money that came our way, but still it's been an extraordinary year financially um, yeah. But we've tried to use that opportunity to, to just yeah. be real smart about what we do and how we rebuild back. That's something. Yeah, that's now, out there you have jellies. We do. I yeah. should. Yeah. Now, what, what is that <laughs> all about? What's that all about? That fit in? <laughs> well, I can tell you just generally, um, we are like any museum. And if you go to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, yeah. uh, I went to the, they had a uh, Henri Matisse in Paris exhibit that was like a temporary exhibit before the pandemic. And I went down there, paid my $25 <laughs> to go in the museum. Uh, and I went downstairs and it's, there's the Matisse exhibit. And yes, there's some artwork from Matisse, but it's all like atmosphere. It's like Paris at the turn of the century, the cafes, the you know high society, the, the era before the World War. Uh, and so you get really interested in Paris of that time. And then, of course, you're about uh, you're just about uh, done when you go into the gift store. And yeah. You cannot yeah, leave. That's right. You cannot leave without going through right. the gift store. Uh, and in there, you found any. Some of it had nothing to do with Henri Matisse. It was all about just bringing some Paris home with you. 
Paris foods, Paris, they had bread, <laughs> oh, they had all Oh, is them. that interesting? And so now that I'm a museum professional, <laughs> I'm like observing this thinking, hmm. Uh, it turns out that I guess anywhere from 30 to 40% of a museum, a nonprofit museum's uh, revenue should be from the gift sales oh. that come from your store. Uh, it's just people do want to buy things, and so don't make it difficult for them. And in fact, right. come up with things that make it worth their time to come here. Yeah. So if all we had in our store, which is which over is there, which is a great little way, store, yeah, if is. all we had were things from some catalog that anyone could buy anywhere, it doesn't kind of create a lot of excitement. So uh, prior to this, when I was involved with Hippo Press, the company that I, that I helped start. Um, I was uh, doing a lot of work with wholesale uh, food distribution, working with made in New Hampshire people who right. oh, create wonderful. jams and jellies right. and yeah. mustards. And I thought, it, they do a great job. Wouldn't it be great if we could bring some custom made products into our store and somehow package them so they'd fit our mission of trying to educate people about New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. So the jams and jellies you saw are up front, we have five of them, and each one of them are flavors named after a New Hampshire aviation pioneer. Whose story oh, we try okay. to tell here That's in the museum? Question, oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so there's five flavors. One of them is Bernice Blake blueberry. That's yep, the one that's the one. Yeah. 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 So who's Bernice Blake? Um, she was the first female commercial pilot in the state oh, of New Hampshire. Yeah. Oh my and goodness! And she got her license right here in Manchester in 1929, uh, and she got a commercial license a little bit later. Uh, and on the 90th anniversary of that, which was a year or two ago. We celebrated Bernice Blake by doing a whole um, program about her achievements and her career. Because she was friends with Amelia Earhart. They helped start something oh, called the 99s, goodness. which exists to this day. It's an organization and fraternity of, um, or sorority of, of female pilots yeah. all around the world. Hmm. Um, and uh, it turns out, if her name sounds familiar, it's because she was the same family that started the Blake's Creamery. Oh, in Manchester, on the west side. which is yeah. yeah, and it's now Blake's restaurant yes. that everyone yes. knows. So when we had our program, of course, I invited them all in and said, right. if you want to bring in some ice cream, we'd really appreciate it. And they were so kind to bring in all this ice cream. I found out early, if you want to fill the museum, free ice cream is a yeah. terrific way of doing it. And so that kind of sealed the deal with me. I knew food is something we can do something with here. So yeah. if you get Bernice Blake Blueberry, so you get a jar of jam, but you also have a little inscription that says what she did and why she's important. Mm -hmm. And her photo is on it as well. Yeah. So you can get Bernice Blake Blueberry, you can get Thaddeus Lowe Multiberry, he was a famous balloonist, well, long oh, before the Wright brothers. Yeah, yeah, you might even see him in Canada yeah. back there. He was a New Hampshire guy who brought ballooning to the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln hired him to help the Union Army spy on the rebels from balloons. And he went down in aviation history for um, being the first guy to, to do that with balloons. He was the first, he was called Chief Aeronaut of the Union Army in the 1860s. This is before powered flight. Wow. So he's a New Hampshire story that's like really surprising yeah. when you learn about it. So he's got his own jam. Yeah, As he should. That I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's so, I knew it had great. to be tied yeah, into something. Yeah, yeah, I just should say the jams are made by Sue Stretch of Laurel Hill Jams in Bedford. Oh, they right. are always voted best in New Hampshire by New Hampshire right. Magazine and all that. And she was kind enough to let us sort of relabel them for mm. our purposes. So mm -hmm. yeah, thanks to her. Oh, is that nice. For the mustards, uh, there's a company called Blackwater Mustards in Kentucky. And he makes um, this, it's, it's sort of a high-end gourmet mustards. And we're going to, uh, we, when we teach kids about the science of flight, one of the first things you talk about is the four forces of flight, lift and drag and so on. Uh, so we're creating a line of four mustards, each for one of the forces of flight. <laughs> and so it'll be one way for kids, if they can't remember the, the, uh, the four forces of flight, maybe the mustards will help them. <laughs> That's so, good. Yeah. Association. Yeah, That's if we can, right. if we can uh, take our mission and extend it to things that yeah. may not involve airplanes but make people happy, then mm -hmm. that's a recipe for a gift store that yeah. I think uh, will help oh, us fulfill wonderful. our mission yeah. and make some money. Yeah, and I want you to tell us too about the gala and all the great events that are coming up. You have some great things sure. ahead. Yeah, uh, I'll speak of the gala just because uh, that is our, our one big event every year we do. Uh, it's essentially a fundraising uh, gala. It's a party. It's a celebration of all we've accomplished and what we want to do going forward. Uh, this year happens to be our 25th anniversary. Actually, last year was, but we missed that because of COVID. So we're calling our 25th anniversary this year. Um, but it's primarily a fundraiser. Um, we do 
uh, raise a good portion of our education funding from that one event. Wow. Um, and so if people can attend, uh, it's a great time. It's a lot of fun. Um, but you'll also be supporting the education outreach that we are doing to try to uh, reach young kids early enough for them to get serious about science and math, mm. which you need to, you can't just show up at the airport and be a pilot. You mm -hmm. need to go through a lot of training. Mm -hmm. And I think it really helps if kids understand that early on. That's part of our mission is to get kids to focus yeah. uh, and, and, and know why they're sitting in the classroom and where they're going to go with it. So if we have someone come into a classroom who is a pilot mm. or an air traffic controller or a retired mm. Navy mm. Uh, you know, crewman, uh, that makes it real for them. Mm -hmm. And yes. the gala is our way of funding all of that. Uh, buying the supplies and getting all of the nice. equipment we need. We're going to be doing more distance learning, so that doesn't come free. We have to right. buy some new equipment for that. So it's Friday, October 1st. Uh, we're just getting word out with a save the date uh, postcard to mm -hmm. everybody in the next month or so. Okay. Um, we probably won't mail it to everyone in Londonderry. Um, sure. But we'll have it on our website, and we'll be writing about it, and, and we'll be in and the London area. And we're great at spreading paper. the word. We'll okay. make sure that it gets out there. Yeah, it's going to be at the uh, executive court um, on South Mammoth, just over the London area line mm -hmm. in Manchester. Uh, and it's uh, going to be from 5.30 to 9.30. And I can say we are going to have, we're, we're rolling the dice on this, but we're assuming that restrictions will be loosened by then. Mm -hmm. And we have an 18-piece big band orchestra oh, going to be the oh, highlight yeah. of this. Wow. So if, yes. the, if the education mission doesn't get you the big band show, <laughs> and they're going to do an hour and a half of dance music. Um, that will be after a change. Yeah. Oh, my so, gosh. Uh, it should that be a great. a great night, a great Friday night, when I hope we'll be looking in the rearview mirror at COVID mm -hmm. right. and ready yeah. to party. Oh, yeah. that sounds wonderful. Great venue, Backyard Brewery, the executive. Yep. I mean, that's wonderful, all kinds of good things. Oh, that's, nice. yeah, that will be. And you do also have the classroom out here, too, where you bring students in mm -hmm. and they actually build a glider. I, they build an airplane, well, don't they, Jeff? I yeah, know that um, it was amazing to see. Our, uh, our, our education outreach takes many forms, and um, in the last two years, a really big chunk of it has been a program that we do um, in partnership with the Manchester School of Technology, okay. which is right next to Memorial High School here in South Manchester. Yes. It's a school that uh, those of us who've been around a while might have used to call the Votech. Yes, it's where the auto mm -hmm. shop is. And Culinary. Yeah, all of that's in yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and now they're building a plane. We have uh, worked with them on a partnership where students in their manufacturing and engineering program are building an airplane. It's a kit-based airplane. Uh, that's available from a company that's called right. Vans Aircraft in Oregon. It's very well known. And their aircraft are designed to be put together by like a retired pilot who might want to build his own plane as a project. You know, it takes six or seven years for you to do it because there's 15,000 rivets. And, but you can do it step by step on your own. Uh, instead, we're having a team of about 20 students mm -hmm. helped by about a dozen volunteers from our community work on building one of the planes, uh, what we thought would be one school year, but COVID stopped that, sure. so it's taken mm -hmm. us two years. We're almost done the first plane. It's a, yeah. it's a real plane. It's not a rubber band model. Right. This is a real aircraft. Um, it's it flies. Two seat, well, it will it fly. It will fly. It's a two <laughs> seat, um, it's a Vans um, uh, RV12IS, uh, which is a two seat um, light sport uh, aircraft, uh, and it's all metal. Um, hence all the rivets, <laughs> um, and it'll be based here in Manchester, and uh, the kids will um, finish building it, we hope, sometime between now and midsummer, uh, and when we can get it flying, which involves a lot of FAA certification and all that, um, the plane will be sold on the open market. There's a really strong market for this type of plane oh because it's a good aircraft, People just don't want to have to build it themselves. So you can sell it to people who want a Vans RV12. And all of that money will be used to buy the next kit. The next kit. Oh, and wow. you wind up with a self-sustaining wow. assembly line. Didn't cost the taxpayers of Manchester a dime. Mm -hmm. um, the school uh, was so supportive of it, they went and got grant money to build a workshop hangar next to the school. So we're not in borrowed equipment bays anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got our own space. Uh, the kids are really into it. Uh, and uh, it's uh, one of these programs that brings together business because it costs, we've had to raise $350,000 for this. Wow. Wow. And we're almost there, we're at 330 something. But over wow. two years, we've really been successful at finding businesses. Um, yeah. A good example is Wirebelt right here on Harvey Road. Right. David Greer and his employees have been incredibly supportive of this. 
Uh, even though they don't build airplanes right. at, at Wirebelt, they do a lot of metalworking, and yes. they understand the value of the hands-on experience these students are getting right. in, in workforce development. So uh, the business community, the volunteer community, we have people with five or six decades of experience in the workshop with these kids. And um, oh. as good as the public school okay. teachers are over there, right. uh, what a great thing to have these people who are not teachers, but are just experienced people in this field. Experts. Yeah, being like, they're not their authority figure, they're like their uncle right. or aunt mm -hmm. who works on planes. Mm -hmm. And you get a kind of bonding going on, or almost an apprenticeship thing going on, that yeah. really helps the public school connect with these kids. Wow, that's um, and then it helps the school itself, because uh, as of next year, the school will have an official aviation program. Oh kids will be able to get credits that can be applied toward programs at wow. SNU and other places. Mm -hmm. So Probably the only one in New Hampshire. No, there's one up in North Conway that's oh, like pretty far along right, at Kennett yeah. High School, um, and there's several others that are kind of looking dabbling at what we're doing. In it, dabbling mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, well, we always thought this was sort of a, a proof of concept mm -hmm. project, and we were glad to do it in Manchester because you can't find a more um, troubled school district than, than Manchester with all the pressures that they go through as a big city school district. Sure. Um, and we felt if we can make it work there, then uh, really any school district should be able to yeah. decide to they can do this. It. And I should point out that it's open to Londonderry students because Londonderry does send students to the MST right. because it's a regional career um, right school. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many, but I think we have at least a couple students from Londonderry wow. working on this plane. And that can change depending on from year to year how many students want to uh, join in. Um, but it is part of Londonderry's program. That's because they send their kids uh, up to the yeah, school. That's wonderful. That's something. And everyone working together. Yeah. Oh, that's why. It's that one other thing that you have a wing over there, and I'm not sure if I'm calling it, but yeah. it's just fascinating because you can actually see how a wing of an airplane was put together and how simplistic and how very thin it is. I mean, it's very delicate, yeah. and mm -hmm. not all of them, of course, but it's just so mm. fascinating that you can go over and actually look and get close to it and see internally how it looks, you know? Yeah, it's well, a lot of great things. What we've tried to do here is to recreate what would have been the experience maybe a couple generations ago, uh, where if a kid loved aviation, like Alan Shepard from Derry, right. as a young boy, yeah. teenager, would ride his bike to this airport in the 1930s, right. watch the planes coming in and out, right? And if you were at all friendly with the pilots, they'd get you in and they'd sweep out the hangar and do all the chores and maybe you'd be able to bum a ride. Yeah. And Alan Shepard did just that and it launched him on a career that took him to the moon, you know, in 1971. Know. Now yeah. today, if a kid tried to do that, they get arrested. Yeah. You, you can't, there's fences, there's glass everywhere. And so for, a, for some time now, young people, their exposure to aviation has made it almost just an inconvenience, if it's anything. Yes. You gotta take off your shoes. Yes. You gotta put away your device. You gotta yeah. do this, you can't yeah. do that. You gotta sit here, right. put that belt on, do what I tell you. Where's the magic in that? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, and so when kids come here, we want them to be able to get right up close to our experimental mm. biplane. You can come and yes. tap the wings in here. It sounds like a drum. Ready? <laughs> Listen. Sounds, oh, like yeah. the <laughs> sounds like the Indians are on the warpath. <laughs> and, you know, kids otherwise don't get close to it. That's it's like right. a work of sculpture, isn't it? It's some weird shaped thing. Yeah. And to come up to close to it and touch it is mm. what sometimes gets the interest going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just what you said, to see inside the oh, wing that's yeah. back there is an antique biplane that was one of the first planes built in New Hampshire. Uh, and you can see the craftsmanship uh, of the woodworking that had to go in because mm -hmm. then as now, it had to be as light as possible for it to be able to fly efficiently. Wow. And so there's a lot of, uh, I guess you could say, cutting edge technology for yeah. the 1920s in shaping the wings right. and the ribs and the elements inside that before you stretch the fabric over it. But that's the thing, the stretching of the fabric. Yeah. It's just shocking that that's how, it, and then you're up in the air and you're flying. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, uh, just, just yeah. amazing It's like a say. super like home craft project in, a, in yeah, different stages. Really there's like fabrics, there's woodworking, oh, yeah. there's just, small engines. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a lot of different disciplines that go into uh, creating a machine that right. will fly through the air under its own power. No, just, wow. uh, yeah, my gosh. But uh, is there anything else that we, mm -hmm. I did, are we on our five minutes here and were you giving me that signal? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's like, it's so exciting. But I'm to just getting about. started. I know, that's what we need. And part two next, <laughs> next Wednesday at, um, but Jeff, that's the thing and that's the energy in this museum. Mm -hmm. I mean, you will not be disappointed. Bring everyone you can and enjoy it. Yeah. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, so, and thank you for being with us. I mean, yes, this was. thank you. And why yes. don't you give your 
website again. Yes, yeah. that number again. Now that <laughs> the website again is um, Aviation Museum of NH dot org. So it's just our name, Aviation Museum of NH dot org, um, and you'll get to a website that will give you uh, a lot of the info that we've covered here and a lot more about what's coming up. Uh, and what we've been doing, and pictures, and everything else. Well, well thank you so much. Yeah, it was very, very interesting. interesting. Oh, yeah. my gosh, thank you. And now you've got a new place to bring your grandsons when they come yeah. over, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. I know much. it. But, uh, no, thank you very much, and um, thank you to everyone out there. You're going to love this show tonight. It's really been good, so thank you. Very Thanks very much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night.